In March 2024, Niger made history by becoming the first African country to end military cooperation with the United States. Currently, United States officials are trying to negotiate with the military government of Niger to allow their forces and base remain in the country, but no one knows whether the government of Niger would agree or not. However, it's becoming very obvious to the United States that it has lost influence in the Sahel and is gradually losing influence across Africa. But the United States doesn't want to let go completely and is trying to pull some African leaders to its side. Recently, commandos from the United States military paid a visit to one of the most corrupt, abusive, and repressive regimes in Africa in an effort to, to strengthen ties with the country. This country is none other than Equatorial Guinea, a country in Central Africa. Now, when we say that the U.S. military paid a visit to Equatorial Guinea, we don't mean that they came for a tour of the country. These officials came to deliver humanitarian aid, financial assistance, from the United States government to the president of Equatorial Guinea, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo, a tyrant now in his sixth decade in power. The aid to Equatorial Guinea is the latest attempt by the U.S. to woo President Teodoro. Speaking after the donation of humanitarian aid to Equatorial Guinea, Commander Michael White, the defense attaché to the U.S. Embassy in the country, stated, We hope that this donation is the beginning of additional cooperation. The U.S. Ambassador to Equatorial Guinea, David Gilmore, expressed hope that the recent donation of medical supplies would be the first of many opportunities to partner with the government of the country. Ordinarily, this engagement between the United States and Equatorial Guinea is not supposed to be a bad thing because it's normal for countries to seek engagement with each other. However, for a country that supposedly prides itself on pushing for democracy, human rights, and anti-corruption, the fact that the United States is willing to work with a regime that is the complete opposite of what it stands for just because they want to maintain a military foothold in Africa proves to the world how hypocritical the United States is. Before we explore the hypocrisy of the United States, let's take a look at the corrupt and oppressive regime of President Teodoro. For people not familiar with the country, Equatorial Guinea is the third smallest country in Africa, with a population of about 6 million people. And, like most African countries, Equatorial Guinea is blessed with so many resources, including oil. Interestingly, this small country in Central Africa is one of the most prosperous countries in Africa, with a GDP rank of 31st in the world and a Human Development Index of 9th in Africa. But 70% of the country's population lives below the poverty line because the wealth, which is more than enough for less than 2 million people, is concentrated in the government and the country's elite. As with all African countries, the problem lies with their leader, President Teodoro Obiang. After Equatorial Guinea gained its independence from Spain in 1968, Francisco Matias Nguema, who had previously held several positions during the colonial rule, was elected as the first president of the country. He went on to rule for the next 11 years with an iron fist. Under his regime, Equatorial Guinea experienced mass suppression, purges, and killings. Some analysis even revealed that a third of the population was killed or went into exile. Machias's regime is widely regarded as one of the most brutal and oppressive regime in the world. After Macias ordered the deaths of several members of his family, his nephew, Teodoro Obiang, who was a senior military officer at the time, orchestrated a coup and took him out in a bloody coup. Since then, President Teodoro Obiang has ruled Equatorial Guinea uncontested, making him the second longest ruling leader in the world after Cameroon President Paul Biya. Compared to his uncle's rule, Teodoro's regime was considered more humane at first. But, as time went on, it became increasingly brutal and authoritative. Even though it's a democracy and corrupt, there are opposition parties, but it's a well-known fact that President Teodoro holds all the governing power in the country. Every election that has been organized in the country has been manipulated and rigged to ensure the president stays in power. And for all intents and purposes, President Teodoro is a president for life in a country that is supposed to be democratic. 
reports on human rights in the country, detail accounts of extrajudicial killings, torture, inhuman punishment, arbitrary arrest, and political imprisonment by the state. It also reveals high-level corruption at all levels of government, especially the top. Despite the fact that the wealth of the country is more than enough for the population, President Teodoro and members of his inner circle continue to amass personal fortunes from the revenues associated with monopolies on all domestic commercial ventures, as well as timber and oil exports. In 2003, President Obiang told the citizens of his country that he felt compelled to take full control of the national treasury to prevent civil servants from engaging in corrupt practices. After telling his citizens this ridiculous statement, the president deposited more than half a billion dollars into more than 60 accounts controlled by himself and his family at Riggs Bank in Washington, D.C. The only thing the U.S. did was fine the bank $16 million for allowing him to do so. In 2007, Obiang was suspected of using public funds to finance private mansions and other luxuries for both himself and his family. The U.S. Department of Justice alleged that Obiang and his son, Theodorin, had appropriated hundreds of millions of dollars through corruption to purchase mansions, private planes, and luxury cars in the United States. However, the case was closed after Theodorin forfeited nearly $30 million in assets to the United States. Between 2011 and 2012, many assets were seized from Obiang and his son by the French and American governments, including mansions, wine collections, and supercars. Swiss prosecutors took possession of 11 of the younger Obiang's luxury cars in 2016, seizing Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys, a Bugatti, and a Rolls-Royce. In 2021, France seized $170 million of Theodorin's assets, including a 101-room mansion near the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. However, these seizures have not affected Theodorin's conspicuous consumption. He continues to spend millions of dollars on a luxurious life while asking the United Nations for aid because he is the vice president of Equatorial Guinea. Yes, you heard that right. President Obiang made his son, who prefers to live a high life of luxury, the vice president of the country. Obviously, he is preparing for his son to take over whenever he feels like stepping down from the presidency. Despite how obvious it is to everybody that the presidency of Teodoro Obiang is corrupt, oppressive, and far from being democratic, the United States has chosen to ignore that and seek partnership with them. Yet it's the same country that sent its top officials to Niger to tell them that the only way it would continue its partnership with Niger is if Niger conducts an election, signifying a shift from military rule to a civilian one and stopping any alliance with Russia and China, both of which are undemocratic countries. Isn't that hypocritical? But then it shouldn't really be surprising. After all, this is not the first time that the United States has turned its back on its so-called principles of democracy and human rights in favor of its interests. The fact is, it's only when it serves the interests of the United States that it practices democracy and human rights. And right now, the interest of the United States is to counter any influence of China and Russia in Central Africa. It was reported in 2022 that China had plans to establish a military base in Equatorial Guinea. And since then, the United States has been trying to woo the president of Equatorial Guinea so that the only military base that will be in the country will be that of the U.S. Following the February donation worth $24,000 of supplies, including baby formula and first aid kits, the Army released a statement saying that U.S. forces worked with the government of Equatorial Guinea to facilitate this engagement, signifying sustained relations between the two nations. What is surprising, however, is the fact that the U.S. military made a donation of medical supplies as if the country were in the middle of a war when in truth the country is so rich that its president has a net worth of $600 million. The United States' engagement with the presidency of Equatorial Guinea proves yet again that it does not deserve to be called a defender of human rights and democracy. In fact, it can rightly be said that the U.S. is the biggest abuser of human rights in the history of the world. But because they are the superpowers, nothing is being done about it. 
Hopefully, it all ends one day. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.